care about our future Thank and you. that little girl's future? How yes. much money would it cost for you to actually care about us? You're running a company that's making money off of fossil fuels that are killing our communities. Uh, I, if you want to have a seat and we can have a respectful discussion, we can do that. But if you're not going to have a respectful discussion, there's not going to be doing so, I don't get any money from fossil fuels. You know who's my biggest that's, donor? That's not true. That's you're, actually you're, absolutely you're, true. Your company Strive owns $50 million in fossil fuels. Message. Because index funds of every American in this room does, and we deserve to be proud of it. That's and I refuse. Ex excuse me. You're excuse okay. me, sir. Excuse me, sir. This isn't productive. This isn't productive. And this is what's wrong in our country. What's right in our country is we have the right of free speech and open debate. And I'm sure this gentleman, I think, has something to say about a similar matter. But we have a generation in this country where we have taught that the way you're supposed to win a debate or otherwise isn't based on region or merit, but to actually just shout the other side down. We don't do that in this country. The way we do things in the United States of America is we engage in free speech and open debate on the merits. Oh, wait. Climate change got exposed this morning, or I guess when I figure out this. And I've been figuring this out. I've been talking about climate change for a long time, how I believe it's an exaggerated problem. They're 0 for 60 with all their climate change disaster predictions. And it, and it has caused a point in our generation, Gen Z, even many millennials, to have something called climate, and climate anxiety, where millennials and Gen Z are making choices not to have kids because they don't believe they'll be here in 12 years, which was a prediction that also was wrong. And you saw from the intro a few examples of the, 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 the desperation these people and how emotional these people are protesting, holding up shops, getting mad about the fact that people are not buying into their religion at the same rates as other, <laughs> as other religions, right? Climate change, the uh, catastrophe, religion, it should be its own category right now. Because for the longest, they kept telling anybody who did not agree that the world was going to end in 12 years, Greta Thunberg style, how dare you? You was a science denier. All right? And this is one of the problems with our knowledge system. I made this point a lot on a lot of my climate change videos, and I'll reiterate it right here in this video. My, my biggest argument in climate change... Uh, my climate change videos is the fact that the other the, the contrarian opinion is never represented when it comes to climate change and fossil fuels. They always talk about how they think solar and wind is the energy that can replace fossil fuels, but they don't talk about the trade-offs of what happens if we move away from the fossil fuel energy source. Fossil fuel is the cheapest energy source in the world. And it's the most renewable, technically, right? It's cheap. It's, it's efficient. You get more energy for your buck. Because if you look at the state of infrastructure today, solar wind only contributes to 5% of the infrastructure around the world. And it's been heavily pushed by government, by a lot of these socialists, communists, central government types, the globalists. They want us all on green energy, solar wind, all this stuff. But if you look at the math, they ain't mathing. And nuclear... If you were to go with an alternative energy source, nuclear is your best shot at replacing fossil fuels, but they don't like nuclear either because it's too cost effective. Because in reality, and this is my biggest point, climate change is used to justify government spending. That is the reality of climate change. And anyone who's doing all this, and this is why, this is one of the things I hated about the climate change people. They hid behind children and says, look at, you're condemning their future. Emotional manipulation, right? Trying to make you do an irrational decision based on emotional reasons, based on sympathy, right? Look how manipulative these climate change people are. They can't argue on the merits. That's why I led in with the Vivek video. They can't lead with merit because on the merits, they're wrong. But if you deny climate change, and this is why I say climate change is a religion. A senator, a, a congressman, I, oh, sorry. A senator died. His name was James Enoff. I, I, hopefully I didn't butcher that. He died, 
And look how they put before they announced he died. Who denied climate change? Edward M. Kennedy, Senator Starwell, is dead at 77. So look at the Democrats. Robert C. Byrd, I believe that's how you say your name, a pillar of the Senate, dies at 92, who was alleged, actually, I don't think it's alleged, he used to be part of the KKK, right? The media like to paint him in a rosy light, saying, oh, it's a redemption story, which proved that the Democratic Party never really switched. Him being in it really proved that the Democratic Party never switched. But hey, I digress. Look how they covered the Republican that died. He, he says something we didn't like, and then we're going to lead that in like it's a bad thing. We're going to dishonor his memory like it's a bad thing. You could be a Klan's member, right? If you're a Democrat, you can be a Klan's member, murder a girl, and then pre and press with, and the press will politely leave it out of your obituary, your obituary. Sorry. But if you're a Republican, a 30-year Senate career will be reduced to taking cheap shots about global warming. Global warming is fake. Now, I'm going to be called a, a, a science denier. Well, I have science for you, climate change zealot. No matter how often journalists repeat the lie that summers are becoming more extreme in the U.S., it doesn't make their claims true. This is the problem. It's Marxist, Leninist, socialist tactics. Repeat a lie often enough, and the masses and the people will believe it to be true. He who controls the future, no, he who controls the children controls the future. So for socialists and for many people on the left, education is a very important institution that they captured. This is how you get these hysterical Gen Z young people crying about the climate change. Having emotional anxiety over climate change. You teach them young the ways they should go. The Bible warned you about that. This is why I homeschool my kids. Because my, my son's going to know these alternative facts. I'll post this as many times as needed to this summer until it resonates. Study it, stare at it until your eyes fall off their sockets. When they do, finger them back into your skull and study some more until it burns into your retina. This plot shows the average number of days per year with the daily maximum temperature of 95 degrees, 100 degrees, 105 degrees. The trend is down. You think I'm lying? Let's go. Let's just let's just rush. No, 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 I don't got time, right? I'm trying to do a quick video, right? The U.S. Oops, sorry, guys. The U.S. observed numbers of very hot days per year from 1895 to 2023. It's the hottest. It's the hottest summer in 40 years last year. Look at look at the numbers. Days over 95 degrees equal to or over 95 degrees are in orange. Red is over 100, and if it's black. It's 105. But I thought last year was the hottest year ever. Climate changers. I thought I'm a science denier because I denied the fact that climate change is an exaggerated problem. Interesting. And I, I'm still going to fall back to the point. Climate change is just merely a means to justify government spending. Here's a list, if you missed it, from 1966. Sorry, guys. I know the touchscreen ain't working today. From 1966, okay, forget it. 1966, all the climate change predictions that was supposed to happen. 1974, another ice age. 1974, the ozone depletion, great perils to life. Same catastrophic messages from the 60s all the way to 2024. What changed? These climate change activists got into academia, got into the education system. They're in Hollywood pushing this messaging, what we would call propaganda. What's the difference between propaganda and mass knowledge is the fact that how much validity it has in reality. O for 60, climate change uh, predictors have, right? And I tie it to political reasons. There's a very simple reason globalists are using climate change as a pretext to wage war on farmers and food supplies. If you control the food, you control the people. It's straight from the authoritarian playbook. Give the, reason, give the re people a reason to give you power. Right? And I'm going to just do a, a quick uh, video. I don't want to spend too long on it. I want to go through the cost of what it will take to do net zero emissions. Because this is the goal that a lot of these uh, climate changers been pushing. ESG, the woke companies of the world, they say, oh, we're going to limit our, 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 our digital, I don't know, not digital, our economic footprint, the damage of society. 
And here's an un, un, unconvenient, inconvenient truth for a lot of these climate change people. Human flourishing relies on the fact of us impacting nature. Because le- if nature is left at its natural state, it is a threat to human life, human flourishing. Take that to the bank. When we're in a forest and it's wet and cold, we'll die to death. Unless we, what, break the branches off, make our little tents, make fire. We're impacting nature for our survival. And climate change, I believe, is emphasis. It's an- is anti-human flourishing. Clean energy means less energy. That is period by the line. You won't have the same standard of living on electric energy than if you had fossil fuels. This is why many people defend fossil fuels because on its merit, look at Africa. Africa has limited access to fossil fuels and kids are dying. Infrastructure is not like, med- they can't use medical equipment because it uses too much power. It's, it can't, they can't use it reliably. And a lot of human lives are lost due to the fact that they don't have accessible energy. If we transition to an all solar infrastructure, the same thing is going to happen to us. We're going to be like California, rolling blackouts, not enough energy to go around. We have to ration energy. Hey, this sector has energy. Now we turn it off. This sector has energy. We'll lose our quality of life in what? For the sacrifice and religion of the green religion. Climate change. This is why I say it's a religion. Climate change is a religion. Look how these, how much fervor those people have. You would think they were trying to tell you what the, the devil is a lie. The devil, the devil's he's here, Vivek Ramaswamy. The devil of climate and global warming, which is subjective, by the way. More people died of cold than warm. So as a human flourishing point, this is my point of view before I go back into the video. My point of view is I'm, I'm not worried about climate change. Climate, climate change is an exaggerated problem. Call me a climate change. Denier, I don't give a damn. Climate change is not a threat to me or to human race. The thing I care about is climate danger. How dangerous is the change to human life and human flourishing? You can't make that point about global warming because gl- warm temperature is better for human nature, for human flourishing than cold. More people died of cold and heat. We have AC. We have technologically advanced. We have technology that help us adapt to the climate. That's why I'm allowed to live in Florida, one of the hottest states in the union, because I have this great thing called AC. And I believe in human ingenuity. I can't say this word, but you guys know what I mean. I believe in human innovation. I believe in the, uh, the human's ability to innovate and adapt using technology to live in a hotter climate. But until you can verify and show me with evidence that I'm supposed to be worried about a 0.2 increase in heat or zero on average, an increase of 0.2 degrees hotter temperatures, and you're supposed to try to justify to me how I should be concerned about that, that's for you to make. But for me, nah, that's not a, I don't see that as a threat to my life or the, or the human species as a whole. That's it. I don't believe that human impact on nature is inherently evil. I don't believe in that. I believe it's inherently good because humans need to impact the, uh, the, it needs to impact the environment around them for their own flourishing. And I don't know if you've seen it, but I'm human. So I'm I'm gonna have a preference for my group of people, for my race to live at the highest quality of life it is. Climate change is anti-human. It puts the human as a negative. This is why you don't want us to have kids. This is why you think having kids is a bad thing. Oh my God, you're creating more carbon emissions. In a way, you get eugenics with climate change because they say, oh, if there's only less people, the, the planet will have its uh, ability to heal. Now, as a conservative, I believe in you know maintaining because I, in my view, we are the stewards of this earth. We, we have to manage this earth. And I believe, yeah, yeah, we should have clean water. We should take care of the surroundings around us. But that is in the perspective of, hey, it's in our best interest to do so. Not, oh, we don't want to do anything to the, uh, to the nature and we have to be altruistic and sacrifice our needs, our wants for the betterment of earth. Then it becomes a religion. And this is the problem that I have. I can't tell what the distinction is because I don't even know what the purpose of you guys outraging on the streets for. But I digress. There was a long tangent. Let's get into the cost, what it will cost to do their green vision. Hello, cabinet. And he said that 28 billion a year 
originally allocated to Labour's green investment plan, which was then cut to the five billion, was just a tiny amount. And he said the fact that Keir Starmer had downgraded the investment plans from 28 to 4.7 billion made it sound as if we basically junked the whole thing, but we definitely haven't. So they know the real numbers. Why aren't they being honest about it? Well, who has looked at the real numbers? Turns out the national grid. So this was an article from Bloomberg. And if you see the, the title here, it says, UK energy sector only has to spend 7% more to hit net zero goal. Well, that's a lie. Because if you look at the archive, the original headline was net zero emissions to cost the UK sector $4 trillion. Now, I already told you my angle with the green, it's just to gov justify government spending. And I already know if you're on this channel, you should already know my, my, my point, my talking point about government spending it causes inflation which is what it impacts what human flourishing our livelihood it, be, it it increases the cost of living everyone has to make more money to have the same standard of living they had years ago we don't have inflation because people are living too well we have inflation because the government is living too well if the government can spend four trillion dollars what that would justify hey we need to tax the rich we need to get we need to tax corporations more because they're trying to justify more control they're trying to have more authority, more responsibility over your well-being and your life. And this is what the true purpose of climate change is. They could print his hand. They could try to dance around it. But in reality, it's a way for them to be authoritarian. Oh, I, I'm reluctantly trying to be authoritarian because I'm just trying to save the world. I'm trying to save the planet. And they know during hard times like war, famine, people are more susceptible to allow authoritarians to gain more power. Or look to the government to aid and help them in their day-to-day -day life. So they're trying to create the crisis in the minds of the people. You suffer more from imagination than from reality. That sums up climate change really well to me. Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you agree with me? Do you believe that climate change is just a means to capture the imagination of the youth to think that their world's going to end in 12 years, even though in the 1960s, they had numerous predictions that were wrong and they they still these climate change people still believe that they should have credibility in 2024 and why is it in your thoughts why is it that the mainstream media has not allowed people of opposing dissonant alternative contrarian opinions to the climate change narrative to openly voice their discontent or their thoughts about climate change and how it, it spits in the face of our best interest I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We really do appreciate you guys watching the end of the video. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.